All right, guys, we're going to be making a video here to show you how to uh, set up a non VLink Neo uh, for the first time to your computer, as well as uh, setting up a transmitter that's not necessarily um, on the pick list for the Mikado uh, Germany site. Okay, when you pull the Neo out of the box, the first thing you realize is that it has the boot plug pop is already inside of it. So the boot plug is how you're actually going to register the Neo to your account. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the USB cord and you plug it into the Neo here. Okay, then you're going to take the other side of the USB cord and plug it into the computer here. And the reason you do this in this order without it powered up is that way you don't make a mistake and touch a pen or something with the USB cord and short the Neo or short the, uh, the circuit that controls <clears throat> the uplink. Okay, so next thing you're going to do is you're going to power up the Neo with the negative side down, negative is towards, towards the bottom, as you can see here. And when you power it up, you can plug it into any port that's on the servo side here. You'll notice that it flashes white. If it's flashing white, that means that the boot plug is in and it's ready to connect to the V-Bar Control Manager. Okay, so what you do now, you go to the computer and you open the V-Bar Control Manager. And when you do, it'll automatically read the, the Neo it's going to download the latest software if necessary. And then it's going to tell you that everything is okay. Okay. Once you've done that, you can log into applications. You hit this little button here. And what it'll do, it'll take you to vstavy.info. If you're already logged in, it'll just take you directly to this page. If you're not logged in, it'll say access denied. And then you'll have to actually go log in and then hit applications again. Okay. So once you hit applications, you hit the plus and you can see all the different softwares that you can load. This one has the Express server firmware. Uh, that's what we're going to work with today. Uh, the only difference between the, the Rescue, the Pro, and the Pro Rescue software is just extra features. And I'm going to show you how to set up the transmitter for the Rescue anyway. So um, normally this would come up and it would say registration here. You would click the little button there and register the device, and then it becomes part of your devices on your, your list. Now, once you've done that, you go to Administration, and then My Devices. And when you do that, you'll see all the devices that are in your account. Okay, right now, the one that comes up in red is the latest one, which will be this particular Neo. Now, in order to get this Neo to work with my computer, I have to download the key file. When I download the key file, it encompasses every Neo that's on my account. So I can hook any Neo up from this point and everything will work just like it did before. So if you need to download the key file, you hit download here, and then it's gonna take it and send it to your downloads. And when you see it, you'll see keys.sto, or one or two or three. Okay, this is the important part. There should only be one key file on your computer and it should be in the right place. If you have multiple key files on the computer, then you need to erase all of the key files that are on the computer, download a fresh one, and install it in the right place. Otherwise, it will not connect to the computer. It will not be right, okay? So once, once you've already um, downloaded the key file, since I've already done this before, I'm going to show you what you do on a Mac anyway. You hit VBAR Control Manager, you double click it, and then you right click VBAR Neo 6.0 and hit Show Package Contents. Hit Enter. You see you got the two things, one's in German, one's in English, they're still the same link. And then you can click that and you see where the key file is. Now I've already put the key file in from before, so I know it'll actually connect to my computer and won't have any issues. Once that's installed, you're good to go. On a PC, it works a little bit differently. You go to your, um, you download the, the key file and you go to your downloads and make sure you drag it to the desktop because sometimes it'll be in your downloader, but not the downloads themselves. And when you drag it, it's only a shortcut. It's not the actual file. So make sure you go to the downloads, drag the file to your desktop. <clears throat> Once you've downloaded it to your desktop, you go to your C drive and then program files x86 and then VBAR control and you open that file. When you open it, you'll see a bunch of other little folders in there. Then you just drag the key file into that, somewhere in that spot. It doesn't have to, be, don't put it in any specific folder, just put it in that spot. It'll automatically install it where it needs to go, and then you can close it out and start with this point. Okay, now once this is done, <clears throat> the next thing you need to do is you need to power down the Neo, okay? Take the boot plug out. Um, then you can open the 6.1 software. That way you can see what happens when you do the connection and everything. 
All right, so right now, I got no connection in red. If I take this and I power the Neo back up, like I said, it doesn't matter where you put it in, you'll see now the Neo is flashing blue, and you're going to see on the screen it's connected in green. Okay, now you can't be bouncing the Neo around because the gyros are trying to initialize, so I'm going to let that sit for just a second here, and then it'll pop up like it's supposed to. All right, there we go. All right, so now you'll notice the Neo is flashing in red-green. That's because it's in the bind mode. It's looking for bind if you had B-Control or if you had um, something else set up. That's what the uh, bind setup is looking for. Okay, so now we need to set our transmitter up. At this point, you have to actually tell it what kind of setup you're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to hit the Setup button, hit OK, and then I'm going to hit Create New Version 6 Setup. Now, I've already done that before on this one, so... Uh, there's no need to do it again because then I have to go through and do a few other things that I want to show you with the specific transmitter. But you hit create new version 6 setup and then you go to receiver. And when you go to receiver there, you're going to do this drop down box here. And you're going to select what um, either V control or Spectrum or S bus or whatever. And you're going to tell it how you want to bind. Once you've done that, you click this little button down here that says prepare bind. And once you hit prepare bind, it'll actually allow you to bind a satellite to the NEO. Okay, right now I don't have a, a satellite plugged in, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna plug a satellite in Teleport 1. <clears throat> okay, I plugged it in, this is already bound to this particular unit, um, so I've already done the binding process where you interrupt power for a quick second within one second, and then you'll see the satellite flashing quickly, and then you bind and everything's ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate that one time so you can see what it looks like. So I'm just going to select uh, Spectrum Satell um, Satellite Digital Center 1 or 2, which is just uh, 22 milliseconds DSM-2. Nothing special. You just choose whatever mode you you're, uh, want to bind in. So you hit Prepare Binding. And then on the NEO, you interrupt power and back on again within a second. Okay, let's do this again. Prepare Binding. Off. I think I missed it. Okay, I made it. Now you see the satellite blinking quickly. I'm gonna grab my transmitter. I'm gonna hold my bind button down. And then you'll see the light flashing. I'm gonna let go of the bind. And then the radio will bind it in a second. And you'll see the satellite come on solid. All right. So now we're bound. We should be ready to go. Everything's ready to go. Okay, I had a little situation there where I um, I didn't hold the bind button down long enough, so now we're all bound, everything's good to go. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how I have the transmitter set up specifically for this one. Now, there's some examples to be shown on vstaby.info. I'm gonna go there real quick so you can see what that looks like. And they show you exactly how to set up the uh, transmitter. But as you look here, Spectrum DX7S is not part of the, the setup, okay? So first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about some of the switches and what they're called. Okay, so whenever you set your transmitter up, just understand that everything is the same as it was before, it just has a different name. So Mikado chooses to call, let's see at the top here, you got the, the dual rate slash rudder switch. Um, that is gonna be now the motor switch, which means it's gonna turn the helicopter on or off, okay? And in the middle, there's gonna be auto rotation bailout. So there's no need for two switches like you did before. You can do it all on one switch, okay? So if you have a transmitter that has two three-position switches and two two-position switches, you can set them up however you want. It's just a matter of uh, assigning whatever switch to whatever function you want it to do, okay? So in this instance, the flight mode switch is now going to be the bank switch, which is essentially the same thing because it still changes the head speeds whenever you flip the switch. It just also allows you to change gains, uh, agility settings, whatever for each individual bank. So you can have a super low head speed uh, setup, which requires totally different gains than a high head speed setup. So think of it as um, flight mode plus is what I like to call it. Okay, so now the next switch is the trainer switch, which is rescue. It doesn't have to be that switch. It just has to be um, a two position switch, preferably something that has a momentary button to it. And that allows you in order to do the rescue. And then last but not least, gyro or your throttle cut and that's for nitro only so when the motor's in the off position in nitro it's actually in idle okay the idle position all it does is on the motor switch all it does is arm the auto rotation bailout okay and it keeps the motor running just a little bit so spool ups a little bit less uh, harsh on the um on the system 
uh, the throttle cut for a nitro actually shuts the motor completely off. So for an electric, motor off is the same thing as throttle hold. Uh, for an, uh, a nitro, you have to actually hit throttle cut in order to shut the motor completely off. Okay, so if you look through the setup here, it shows you each individual pane of what you need to set up, um, the swatch type, switch selects, what you need to change, and this is all assuming you have a DX8. Well, I don't have a DX8. I have a DX7S here. So it works a little bit differently because the DX7S only has one three-position switch and the rest are two positions. So how do we get the motor switch to work with the three positions as well as the uh, bank switches and not lose a bank? You can still use it, um, the two position switches, but you choose to lose something. You're either going to lose um, the auto rotation bailout or you're going to lose one of the banks. It just depends on um, different radios like the DX6i. Uh, you can't use it and use uh, that as well because you only have, you have a very limited amount of outputs you can do. Okay, so what I'm going to do, just look through those real quick and you can see what the actual uh, setups are going to be. So I'm going to go through this transmitter one at a time, one spot at a time. And show you what it is. So I'm going to go to the original, the uh, setup menu first. Push the button, hold, and turn it on. Okay. So I've already selected my model, um, and then it needs to be a helicopter, just like it is. Okay. Once that's set, um, you don't want to do that. Just get out of there. And then you put the name in, whatever you want. The swatch type needs to be one servo normal. Okay. Just like all the other V bars. Switch select. Okay, this is where you can actually turn different switches on to do whatever you'd like. I left everything inhibited because I, I found a different way to do it that I, I seem to like. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Flight mode setup. You actually have to turn the flight mode on into to mo flight mode and told the hold on the DX7S to a mix. And what that does, it's gonna allow me to use two switches to work one thing, okay? Uh, model copy, you don't necessarily need reset warnings. Telemetry is all just specifically to the um, the radio. Frame rate, is that's how you set what mode you're in. Right now, this is 22 milliseconds of DSM-2 um, because that's the satellite that I had, so that's what I decided to go with. Uh, system settings, all stuff you don't need. So now we're going to go back to the main setup. Okay. <clears throat> Servo setup. All right, so for each individual setup on here, Everything's going to be 100 and 100, except um, you're going to go travel, excuse me, throttle, uh, aileron, elevator, rudder, everything's the same except the governor. You're going to have 100 at the top, zero at the bottom, okay, for this particular setup. Now, let's say I want to try, do your sub trims, those are all going to be zero, and the reverses. Um, the reverses you can leave as they are, and then you change it in the program after you've actually set everything up set the transmitter up, then you can change it in the program if it's not working the way you need to work it, or if you need to actually calibrate the transmitter to the V-Bar program. All right, so now that that's done, the next one is gonna be dual rate and expo, which is just, it's just all gonna be zero. The dual rate is gonna be 100 and zero, um, which means there's not gonna be two different setups, it's just gonna be the one, and the switch is the aileron dual rate switch. Um, throttle cut, that's for expo, I mean, that's for a nitro, this is an electric, so it's gonna be inhibited. And then throttle curve. Okay, so this is how I had to set up the throttle curves for the radio. Okay, in normal mode, I have everything set to zero. Okay, as you can see. Then on idle up one, I set to 50%. And then idle up, excuse me, hold, I set to 100%. And that's because this radio doesn't have normal idle up one and two. It only has normal and idle up one. But I still needed that third position in order to make the uh, the banks or the... Uh, uh, the uh, motor function work properly, depending on which one I assigned it to. So that's why I use the hold at 100% instead of the traditional 0% like you would normally do it. Pitch curves are linear. Everything's the same in each one, 0 to 100. The gyro function I turned on. Position 0 is negative 100. Position 1 is 0. Position 2 is positive 100. The channel I chose was the gear channel, and the switch is the gyro switch, which is this switch up here. The governor function, which is my two position function, I chose, I turned it on, and it's a two position, so it's gonna be positive 100, negative 100, so it's gonna be off or on. The channel I chose is aux two, and the switch is the aileron dual ray switch, which is this switch right here, okay? So, now I go to tail curves not necessary, mixing is off, all those other things are off, okay? So, now, this is how it works in the setup. Okay, so I'm gonna power my Neo back up. Get everything going with that guy. All 
right, let's close the program, reopen it because I killed the power. Okay, so what you're gonna see, oh, I might need to plug in the USB. Okay, now I need to power up my Neo. Okay, you see it connects and everything initializes like it should. Okay, so now that I've got everything set up, we're gonna go to setup again. We're gonna take a look at that, that receiver channel, see what everything is. Okay, so right now with those three position switches I talked about, I got the gyro switches. You can look on the screen, it's actually operating the bank switches. That's bank one, bank two, bank three. And then I got a pretty cool setup going over here with the throttle curves, which is bank, uh, excuse me, stop right now and idle is in the middle. And then when you flip this back switch, remember those two switches I talked about? That's what turns it to run. That's what actually will make the helicopter run. And if you want to do auto rotation bailout, when it's running, instead of flipping the switch to the middle, which is already there, you just flip the back switch back to back off again, and it turns it to idle, which arms the auto rotation bailout. So you're trying your auto, oh my goodness, I'm not gonna make it, I need to spool back up. You flip this back to run, and it spools up in two seconds versus 30 seconds, which allows you to save the helicopter. Okay, so now you got everything set, and you got these two switches working as they should. And then you got the aileron dual ray switch. If you look here, when you flip that down, you see the blue on channel seven went all the way up or in the middle. So that'll be off or on for the rescue function, either active or idle, oh, excuse me, active or not. So when you upgrade to the rescue, um, all you gotta do is go over here, put rescue, and you change the number to channel seven. And when you flip that switch, you'll see the rescue go from active to, to not. Now let's say I wanna make this instead of my bank switch, I wanna make that my motor switch. And I wanna make these my bank switches, okay? Two days you can do it. You can change it in the radio to change the actual switch location or something simply, since you already got it working, just change the numbers. So you go from five to one and go from one up here to five. And what that does is now my idle and run is right here on this switch and the bank's one, two, three, all right there. It's that simple. So you don't have to get caught up in um, exactly what's going on with the, with the transmitter, what's forced to do. There's other ways of changing things around. So now you have all your functions working as they should as far as the radio is concerned. You got all the switches working, the two three position switches here, and your two position switch for the rescue if you need it. Um, throttle cut would be back here on the, the, uh, the trainer bind or, or any other switch you decide. And that'll get everything working as it should as far as the, the uh, transmitter is concerned. Okay, so from this point, now everything else is the same you normally would do. So now you go through the transmitter, you set the collective, um, you make sure the directions are right first, that looks correct. Rudder is, that's to the right, so it says left, so I go into my radio and I reverse the rudder channel. Um, this to the right and the aileron says left, so I go into the radio and I reverse the aileron channel. And then uh, elevator pull, push is correct, okay? Once you've got the direction set, then you set the actual endpoint, so you hold it down. The endpoint says 95 on the screen, so you go to the dual rate, I mean, excuse me, go to the travel adjustment the radio, and you adjust, you hold that down and you adjust that till it says 100 on the screen. You do that for both surfaces, both directions, excuse me, on every surface. And then once that's done, you put everything in the center, you put your stick, you, you collect your stick in the center, and then you adjust your sub trims to all those on the zero, say zero across the thing. So the aileron, elevator, ele uh, rudder, and your pitch channel. You would change those until it says zero. Once they're done, you're good to go. Everything else is set. Now the rest of it's a V-bar program like you've seen before many times in the past. Sensor orientation, you just pick the, the uh, sensor how it needs to look. Rotation direction, that's dependent on your helicopter, if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Your swash, you pick what your swash plate looks like. Does it look like any of these in the pictures? And if it does, you pick the one it does. And then if you look at the numbers, one, two, and three, that's how you plug the servos into the V-bar. You plug the servos into those channels and you'll never ever have, you'll never make a mistake. The collective direction just means when the swash plate goes up, do you give positive pitch. Yes, that's what it is. That's what it'll be for this one. Here are your servos. Now, this is how I like to do the servos. This is very simple. It works every time. You move your collective stick all the way up. You look at the swash plate. Whatever servo does not go up, then you just simply reverse it. So we'll say the elevator servo didn't go up. You double click that, or you click it and hit OK. Now this, this, the elevator servo, all the servos are going up and down. They follow the stick left and right, and everything should be correct from that point on. This is the trim. Now, when you set the trim and you move the sticks on the on the radio, you notice that none of the servos move. That's because it, the V-bar at this point has put everything to what it thinks zero is. 
So you need to now go in and center your servos, put the servo horns as close to zero as possible. If they aren't completely close to zero, then you can move this, these, these trim, these little things up or down in order to get it where it needs to be in order to be close to zero. As long as that finish number is below 40, you're good to go. If it's over 40, then you need to readjust, uh, take the arms off, move it one spine closer one way or the other, and then readjust. Um, Swatch plate, this allows you to move the whole swatch plate up or down or left and right with the cyclic. If you're just a little bit off, you can do that. The next one is the collective. Um, they changed it in the V-bar a little bit. You got a max positive and a max negative collective. So now you just move your stick all the way to the top. You see it lights up the max positive collective. You slide the slider up or down until you get between 12 and 14 degrees. If the number is way down in 60 and you're at 14 degrees, that means the balls of your servos are too far out. They need to come closer to the center of the servo. If you got the collective all the way up to 120 and you're barely at 11 degrees, that means the balls are too far in. You need to move them out. Same thing with negative. You move the stick to the bottom, it lights up the negative collective, you select that and adjust as necessary. Cyclic, um, when you set it here, your blade pitch should be at zero. When you do this, you set everything should be at zero. If it's not, adjust your linkages to where everything is at zero pitch when it's sitting in this position. When you hit measure, it's going to take the blades to what it thinks is 8 degrees. If it's not at 8 degrees, you move the slider up or down and also you get to where 8 degrees is, is uh, achieved. Anywhere between 8 and 8.5 is fine. There's, there's not really that much difference between the two. Um, that's fine. Some setups will be a little bit more sensitive than others. But as long as you have the balls correct on the first one, they'll be correct on this one as well. All right, now here's the tail function. The tail function now defaults to a 1500 um, microsecond um, uh, uh, servo. So now, if you actually put your mouse and hold it over the, the, the actual function, you'll see a box pops up that comes up and it says 1520 microseconds or 720, 760, 333. If you just pick the one that looks like yours or the frequency, the servo itself or the frequency, you'll never make a mistake as far as that's concerned either. Then you move your tail servo, left or right. And that, that's how you adjust the tail server. If it's wrong, you just double click that and you change the direction in the program. You don't have to change anything in the radio, you change it in the program. And then you set your limits. You, you hold your rudder stick to the left and you see on here it says, you see it lights up the two sides, counterclockwise and clockwise. Um, all depends on if you have the tail direction correct in the, uh, the, servo, the radio setup as well. And then you just adjust the endpoints to where it gets to the end, but it's not binding, left and right. Governor, um, right now it sets the default to external governor, but you have options for nitro or electric governor if you have the pro or the pro rescue. With the express, all you have, you do have a, a governor, it's just not, um, is, uh, you can't do nitro, it has to be electric. So when you do that, you know the governor is set here and you have to hit reset to electric. You said okay. And then you go to the governor two tab, and now you can set up your gear ratio and your sensor configuration. Your gear ratio is just the, the main gear divided by the pinion, and the, uh, the number of teeth on the pinion, excuse me. Sense configuration is half of the motor poles. So if you have a 10 pole motor, that the number should be five, okay? Um, throttle servo adjustment, when you click this on, it changes the, the throttle collective stick now is gonna be the throttle stick. So when you hit okay, it'll allow you to actually set endpoints and things like that as far as it's concerned for like castle ESCs or something that you wanna set those, that's what those are for. Um, you can also use this to set up um, like a Jive ESC. You can do it that way as well. Um, just make sure you turn this off. Turn it off before you um, before you move that stick because if not, that the ESC is going to be active and it's going to spool your helicopter up. Okay. Once you're done, you hit finish, and you're at the back beginning of the, the whole program. Now, when you're at the beginning of the program, there's default sliders, as you can see there. All the little recommendations, logo 600, 500, 90 size, TDR, you just pick a helicopter that's close to the size. So if you've got a, a Gowie X7, which you know is a 700 size machine, you pick 90 size. If you got a T-Rex 500, you go right here, you pick T-Rex 500. Whatever it is, you just pick those bubbles for each individual, um, uh, for the tail gain and the gyro gain, for the, for the tail and the head, excuse me. And it'll be just as close as possible without having to do any kind of weird stuff. And then you can go through and you don't have to play with any P gains, I gains. As long as everything is set up, uh, correctly geometry wise everything will be fine as far as the setup the basic setups go your style is totally up to you that's precise versus vivid um, the higher the slider is the more it feels like a simulator the lower the slider is the more it feels like a fly bar 
agility in the main rotor there, that's how fast the helicopter flips and rolls. So if you want it to flip faster, you move the agility slider up. If you want to slow it down, move it down. The tail yaw rate is how fast the tail um, uh, rotates on a, a flat, flat plane, how many uh, rotations per second. If you put your mouse over the top here and you hold it there, you'll see it, it tells you exactly what value of 100 is about one pirouette per second. So you can move that up or down to get where you want it to be. Governor gain. Governor gain is dependent upon each individual helicopter, what governor you set up. So typically larger machines, um, don't they use a little bit more governor than the smaller machines. Uh, 30 is always a good starting point, but you'll hear the, the governor surge or the motor surge if it's too high, you just lower it a little bit. And, um, and then we'll, I'm gonna make another video later on to show you how to tune that a little bit better to give you a little bit better uh, performance out of the, the governor for each individual machine. Well, um, this is the conclusion. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to PM me on uh, Heli Freak. My screen name there is Laughing Still, and I'm Ron, Ronald Thomas on Run Rider. So uh, you guys have a good time. See you later. Okay, guys, yeah, here's a, uh, a bonus video to show you something really cool. Um, Mikado came out with a way to actually make adjustments um, without the computer, obviously, with V-Bar Control. But um, a lot of people didn't know that you could actually make the adjustments with the V-Control and uh, while you're still connected to the computer or without having to uh, lose the DX7 or lose the other uh, transmitter that you have set up. Okay, so right now, I got my DX7 on. As you can see, everything's on right here. Um, it's not connected to the computer because I don't have power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up the computer. Okay. Excuse me, power up the Neo. And that's going to connect. Okay, so right now, I actually had the V-Bar Control satellite plugged into the Neo. As you can see right here, it's connected. It's ready to go. The special plug that uh, that's provided by Mikado. And if you look, while I'm actually on the, the thing with the V-Control, I'm going to go to main rotor, and I'm going to adjust the agility. Okay. So if you look at the screen and the radio at the same time, if you look, you'll see the agility is going up and down on the screen as well as the radio. So wherever you set it in the radio, that's where it'll be on the the uh, the the, the uh, computer program as well. So once you're done and you want to go ahead and fly your helicopter, you notice that the satellite is still connected as well. Once you're done, you go here and you transmitter, transmitter setup, and if you look through here, you can actually see every one of the the game. Everything is set up to where it needs to be. Excuse me, I apologize. Everything is is available. The uh, tail rotor, the expo, the gains, the governors, model status, all that cool stuff is all in there. Everything is available to you in the V control. When you're done, you power down the Neo. You hear it disconnect, okay? You disconnect in the receiver, okay? Now you take and you power the Neo back up again. It doesn't connect to the V control because the receiver is disconnected, but I'm connected back to the uh, spectrum radio. Go to the receiver tab. You look here and you see everything's working as it should. So it's really cool. If you look at the screen, everything's going up and down, back and forth. Everything's working with sticks. So the cool thing is all you need to do is disconnect the, the, the V control receiver and turn off the, the radio and everything goes back to where it was before. You still see it says Spectrum Satellite Digital Center, which is really cool. So it's just a new, a, a cool little function you can do. And there's also wireless and buddy boxing as well. So.